In our last episode, we explored the fascinating reading and archive room. Now I want to learn more about the car store here, so I'm meeting up with Stephen Lang, head of collections at the British Motor Museum. Stephen, tell us a little bit about what goes on here. Well, uh, it's a fantastic collection of British motor cars, as the name might suggest. Everything from the very earliest, so late 1800s right to modern stuff. And of course, we've got fantastic models, lots of your favorites, and of course, loads of minis. Loads of minis. Now, you just had a mini day here just this last weekend, or a mini weekend is, yeah, yeah. is what it was. Yeah. This place was filled with minis, is that correct? Absolutely, it's one of our most popular days. We do it every year, and of course, with the 60th anniversary, this year it was even more buzzing than it normally is and of course people come to see uh, Monte Carlo minis that we've got the first one the last classic one so we got some of the real jewels of the mini world here and of course it's the right place to be for that you do have which I was thrilled to see as I walked towards the stairs a 60th anniversary mini pavilion a mini display all minis up there yeah I mean, we've got uh, well over 20 minis in our collection which uh, might not sound like loads and loads but actually they're all special in one way if you know, it's the first they're prototypes uh, and of course the the very very last and and these special racing models as well so everything that we've got in the museum uh, whether it's mini or not is something special about the fantastic British motor industry thank you I I do love the mini but you know what a lot of our viewers have more than just minis when it comes to British cars Jaguar uh, Lotus MG Triumph you know Rolls-Royce yeah you guys have well, if it's British and if it was made in Britain, it's here. Yeah, we've got uh, pretty much 400 cars on display and there are some more behind the works. We've got a workshop people can see here and it doesn't matter what era of British motor car, what model of British motor car you like, there's a good chance you'll, you'll see one here. Uh, some of them are one-off, unique, first, last prototypes and some of them are just kind of everyday that people like to reminisce with. You know, there is a museum tours, there's a cafe in there. You know, if you ever wanted to see the greatest British car museum you've ever seen, unlike anything I've ever seen in the United States, you need to come here. Uh, this is your opportunity. Please come visit this museum. This place is a work of art. It's, you could spend all day here. So I really encourage you to do that. Stephen, it's been a real honor. It's been a real pleasure. Thank you for your time Hope today. Hope you've enjoyed your day. I absolutely <laughs> did. I can't take the smile off my face. I'm so happy. Are you pretty happy sitting oh, in Patty's yeah. car here? Yeah, it's pretty sweet. I have goosebumps right now. I'm standing next to 33 EJB number 37, the 1964 Monte Carlo Rally winning Mini Cooper. This is Patty Hopkirk's car that he drove, and I, I'm just beside myself. I can't believe that Paul allowed us to be this close to it and actually touch it. Why did you pull it out, and now when does it go back? Uh, we moved it out for some, uh, for some uh, German press uh, photography earlier today, uh, and we'll be putting it back on display tomorrow with the rest of the Monte Carlo uh, Minis. In the racing little circle that's correct, I saw in the in there. Of the music, okay, yeah, okay. Spot, yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. How long have you been here, Paul? Me, I've been here nearly 30 years. 30 years? Yeah. Wow. Wow. Well, thank you for what you've been doing. I appreciate this. This okay, is great. Um, anything you can tell us about this particular car? How did you get it to the museum? Who donated it? What, what, how did this happen? Well, I believe it came, from, uh, came direct to us from the factory. It was looked after there for quite a while and then. Um, the trust was set up to look after such light vehicles um, and then we've had it ever since and um, we've done as little restoration as is needed really to try and keep it as original as keep possible. Keep the patina. Yeah, I see all the dents in the roof. Yeah, and, that's right. Uh, it's, uh, <laughs> It's, um, we like to keep things as uh, you know, original, obviously those dents have probably got some history so, um, so they've been left as they are. Mm -hmm. These are the padding that keep, you know, from your knees being banged around inside the rough rally stages. Um, they also have padding around the shifter, as you can see there. That is also for uh, your knees uh, being jumped around inside the, the 
rally stage. Um, you can see, of course, it's got the rally dash. Here's something interesting you might not know. The bezels are all painted black. Well, they didn't want any reflection, so they uh, covered the upper and lower dash pad in material. Pa Crinkle painted the dashboard black and painted all the bezels black. They wanted no chrome inside the car so that it would uh, not reflect or blind you in the bright sun. So um, that's pretty fascinating. I also see that they put the brake booster inside the car. It's underneath of the passenger footwell. And uh, another unique thing I see here is that the fuse box is uh, accessible from, for the navigator so that if they blow a fuse, he can replace the fuse without getting out or popping the bonnet. Um, which is also pretty cool. Uh, something that I think is probably one of the coolest thing is this patinaed Monte Carlo Rally um, badge. It, I, I would love for mine to look like that. <laughs> the window would become frosted, but because there was two layers of uh, glass here, this particular area would not become frosted or you know, so you could continue to see out of it. And, uh, Patty told us it's pretty cold in Minsk. So they had to actually pull start the cars and get the oil lubricated through them and it was uh, pretty uh, challenging and difficult because it was so cold. <laughs> Wow, we would have loved to have spent more time here, but we have to get to IMM. In our next episode, we drive down the M5 to meet old friends and create new friendships at International Mini Meet. If you are enjoying this series, please like, subscribe, and share with your mini community.